I am sorry I do not have a rancid fitting music. That's because I was going to do bullying and Murphy from Well Hey Productions already made a video about it and gave some really good advice. I will not be able to top that video. I'm saying click off this video and go watch his before watching mine because his video is a lot better than mine. Okay? Well Hey Productions, great YouTube channel. Go there. Anyway, he did give some advice, and the advice he gave is if you're giving, if you're being bullied and you have access to a large media site, share it, and people will find strength in your story, and it will help in ways that you don't even know. So, I guess here I am offering you my lighthearted tale. When I was younger, a lot of my issues kind of stemmed from, um, a diagnosis I was given. When I was around uh, 6 to 7, I was diagnosed with ADHD and PDD by the University of Michigan after extensive testing because, let's face it, I'm a weird fucker. <laughs> so, essentially what happened is several things that impacted me in a rather negative light. One, the schools at the time did not know how to deal with people like me and it turned out to be rather bad because teachers would end up talking down to me like I was some mentally crazy person who has anger issues or basically some you know like when you talk to a baby or like you want to use the potty that's essentially how teachers talk to people like myself when I was quite a bit younger Secondly, teachers would announce it to the classroom and basically even do flat out assemblies where it's like, yeah, here's these mess, here's the weirdo kids with the mental disorders, make sure not to bully them. Okay, thanks, bye. And that did nothing to help. And what essentially happened from there on is that students begin begun classifying you. And you usually got students on one of either side. Um, you get the students on the, oh, poor kid, oh my gosh, he has mental disorders. Man, I'm glad that's not me. Man, let's, like, go, like, give to, like, a autism charity or something, you know? And with those kids, they're just kind of usually social justice warriors who do nothing, you know, like, be my friend or talk to me, but rather would talk to me only on a level of pity and discomfort. Then there was the other types where it's like, haha, that kid's annoying. <laughs> he has like a speech impediment. Oh my god, that kid's so retarded. And guess what? He actually is. Ha <laughs> ha. And those were the two kinds of kids I kind of got to deal with while growing up. It wasn't fun, it sucked, and school life was a living hell. To the point where while I was going through elementary school, the best grades I got were D's and C's. That was until things lightened up around middle school. But nonetheless, it never really truly got better. Anyway, as I grew up, I, you, many of you may know that I spent a lot of time on the Xbox 360 and Xbox Original and that kind of era of time. And essentially, I would play these games all day, every day, just so I could enjoy a little bit of escape from my droll, droll, annoying life. Eventually, I went on to middle school. Thing, I found a friend, but you know, like I would have, I had like one or two friends who I walked home with, and life was all right. The bullies were abound everywhere, and it kind of sucked. And I got called names, and everything in the book, you know, whether it was faggot to <laughs> fat ass who lives in the mob's basement. Even though I really wasn't that fat, and, and I'm still not that fat. But nonetheless, I had two friends, life was great, and then tragedy struck. Eventually, my brother started hanging out with the more of a wrong crowd. And eventually, he invited someone into our house who was not the best person to be talking to. And eventually he came back later that day and stole essentially everything I held dear. And that was the Xbox, 50 games, and since this was before cloud save, he also stole the hard drive. Which meant that, yeah, everything I had owned and loved was essentially ripped from me. And that had a devastating effect on me. 
So, yeah, that happened. Not to mention, my parents decided that it was time to move. So the friends, the very few friends I had accumulated, I had to say goodbye to. And, again, that kind of devastated me a bit. So as soon as life was looking up, I had to move. So I moved. And, yeah, we started moving once a year, like, for three years or so. And it sucked. Parents... (laughs) And there's a lot of things I went through at home, as well as bullying, that kind of did infect my life in a very bad way. And to be honest, I don't have time to go through every single little incident, but I dealt with bullies. I dealt with freaking, okay, let's see here. I actually have a list of things. I had to deal with bullies. I had to deal with divorce, rent, moving every year, once every four years, house break-ins, loss of loved ones, drugs, suicide, parents who flat out didn't understand how to be parents at the time. It was hard. Kind of like the only way I could really describe it is as depressing. However, fuck that. No, I don't let that own me. I don't let the fact that everything I owned was stolen. I don't let the fact that I am abused from my peers and family alike let me get depressed. I live by the philosophy as long it, which goes as, as long as you impacted someone in a positive way, life is worth living. Whether you do something stupid in a store and make someone laugh, or <laughs> become the life of a party, or fuck it, become the most odd and interesting person, someone who happens to be working at a 9 to 5 boring job happens to talk to then you impacted someone in a positive way and spreaded some happiness. Life's too short to focus on those issues that brings us away from happiness. Life is too short for that. So why not focus on bringing happiness to those around you and brighten someone's day up as best as you can, rather than making yourself look like a jackass and giving someone else a good laugh, or simply being there for someone who you need to talk to. And to be honest, this brings me to a sad quote that I have to bring up because I am a brony and if you don't want to listen to this, then just go away. There is a quote from a song that is from my character from my favorite show. Now, I'm not saying you should go watch the show, but I'm saying if you're in a depressed state and you're wondering what to do about situations or you're wondering how you can get your mood up, This should hopefully explain something that you can do, or my philosophy on things. And the quote goes as this. I'm gonna make you smile, and I will brighten up your day. It doesn't matter now if you're sad or blue, because cheering up my friends is just what I do. Because I love to make you smile. It fills my heart with sunshine all the while. Because all I really need is a smile. I'll let that sink in. Because no matter how hard your life is, someone probably has it worse than you. Rather, you're in the center of Detroit with no water, abusive parents, and druggies at every corner. There's a starving kid in Africa who probably hasn't eaten in like a week. Rather, you're a rich kid who has parents who don't pay enough attention to him and yeah there's probably again some poor kid who don't have kids who doesn't have anything to fall back on you know so no matter what there's always someone that's worse than you and the only way you can honestly overcome that is by being happy despite the odds by making an impact in any little way you can and that's what i'm hoping to do with this video if you found anything I said interesting or uh, uplifting or depressing, you can let me know in the comments. And again, don't forget, go watch Well Hey Productions' video about this because he did a extremely phenomenal job explaining all of this shenismic foul. So yes, this has been your host, That Creepy Reading, and I actually got an Amazon wish list. So if you're willing to make a donation, you can go check that out too. This is TCR signing off.